uh, for our second customer session featuring Carnet's Senior Systems Security Manager. Please welcome Isaias Mercado as he explains PCI DSS 4.0 challenges and Carnet's personal experience with it. Welcome, Isaias. Thank you. So thank you all for being here, here with us, thank Mas. And, and thank Qualis for inviting me and to talk to you and share our experience and knowledge so far in the PCI for zero implementation. We're, uh, uh, my name is Isaias Mercado. I work in Carnet and he, uh, we are one of the bigger acquirer company in, in the country. So I will be talking about some recommendations and sharing some experience while we drive through PCI compliance. We have been PCI compliance for 14 years now, and we have been working with Qualys for nearly 10 years. So we have been working with Qualys since 2014, and we have been using many products from the, uh, from the brand. Uh, I am internal security auditor and, and I have a certification as um, PCI expert professional. So we have been watching many interesting presentations so far. So we are going to try to make a little uh, insight on some of requirements that are new and how we have been addressing them. And besides that, how Qualys uh, can help us in effectively uh, address most of these requirements. For example, we have the requirement 5.2.3.1. A, which is regarding malware in Python system. We also have the requirement A.C.3.B about password complexities and the requirement 10.4.1.A regarding security events and LUPs. <clears throat> the requirement 11C. 1.1-A and B about low vulnerability management and the requirement 11 is 1 and D of security headers analysis for public facing size. And the requirement 12.3.1 about risk evaluation and comparing results between evaluation and identifying assets and how critical they are. So regarding requirement, requirement 5.2 1.3.a, a target risk analysis performed to determine the frequency of scan evaluations of systems and components identified as not a risk for malware. This means that periodic scans should be in place to identify effectively the evaluation and to, to show the evaluations that are covered for malware detection and protection. The quality scheduler scans could help on this with the BMDR module. And you may see the timeline of specific vulnerabilities and devices with the addition of the quality SAM module and demonstrate the hardware being in place with quality policy compliance. All these inputs and supports you receive from Qualys may you help build you risk posture and analysis and, and, and help support your procedure in your organization. Re requirement A.6.3.B and A.6.3.C, as indicated, it is about password policy constraint. And then it should be demonstrated to auditors the complexity that are applied on, on policies. And policy compliance could help you also on this. The requirement 10.4.2.1 and the requirement 12.3.1 also, the risk analysis can effectively be well documented within the activities you carry out with the EDR module, where you can choose a timeline for the event. You may query these events and you may open or close tickets automatically. 
So this support could be shown within your compliance basics to address this requirement. And regarding the requirement 11.3.1 and the requirement 3.1.b, so A and B, the first two are about authenticated scan or educated scan. This could be well covered with quality BMDR module and the deployment of a scanner sensor on your premise, or it could also be deployed at your cloud deployment, at your cloud infrastructure. A cloud agent could do the job with no interference with normal activities, and you might control the time and level of a scanning process. This all allow for all scans to produce all the results in our experience, not effect on device or production operation uh, or any be any other behavior or negative impact or effect has been seen so far. You may you may configure quality blackout and intensity for scans that can be just part of a regulator on a specific times windows if you need it. And you may still get the result for your scan as you need it. So now I would like to talk a little bit about some challenge that the industry, the cyber, sec cyber security industry uh, challenge regarding, uh, regarding PCI and security platforms. So there are solutions that are on-premise or other solutions that are in cloud. The security platforms are competing with cloud providers. We found, we have seen that cloud providers are also offering many security products out there. And the, the security products are like very new and are now well established as security platforms like Qualys. Many of these solutions are point solutions that may cause integration problems. Internal vulnerability scan must be agent-based, authenticate, as indicated before. So what this, does this mean for you? It is important to have the freedom of choice and if necessary, why you, the transition of compliance is in place. The impact and security of compliance initiative due to incompatibilities and vendor friction. Security platform need to migrate to war unified view for PCI DSS for those zero compliance requirement. Difficulty to deploy the multiple agents or launch authenticated scam to comply with the requirement. So it is uh, important to have a unified solution like Qualys where you don't, know, you don't need any uh, multi-vendor providers. So there are many jobs to do and that Qualys may help you a lot doing that. Some of these are multi-solutions or lack of integration. So big Qualys providers continue to offer more and more security solutions and services which are very good. So for example, Qualys has been in the market for a long time now and, and have been developing and, and bringing new solution each time. The cloud security platform should be very tight and have a broader and faster compatibility to, to allow security teams and external auditor to have evidence for control coverage. So Qualys help on this because since you have, since my, uh, the presented speaker has said you have many products there that are all integrated and many, uh, many information inside the same solution and even with the same engine. Uh, so well-established players uh, continue to evolve like Qualys and are offering more and more deep security products. This also forces the security platform to deal as many big players provided as they can. So multiple clouds could be the norm since customers cho could choose from multiple clouds and hybrid solutions. So
So the agent base or an authenticator stance may generate more vulnerabilities. And PCI vulnerabilities should be addressed using a prioritized or risk approach, more approach since, since we began uh, implementing authenticator or agent based scan the number of vulnerability augmented in our platform. So it, will, it was necessary um, to embrace a security approach. And since it is required for PCI, so that's why quality helps up a lot on this. So vulnerability should be prioritized based, based on true risk, CISA, known explode vulnerability or quality detection score. The PCI risk management requires compliance validation beyond provided CBA priorization. What this means it is that it is not just to take into account the CBA priorization, but just other factors like the known explorability vulnerability. Start deployment on time. This is very important because there are a lot of effort to do and then it is very important that you begin the deployment of the solution ensure process are documented and consistent vulnerabilities are analyzed and prioritized based on true risk these uh, tools are very helpful in terms of identifying the risk and as has been indicated by my previous speaker you can use like many give the information to the right people so you need to have a security approach after internal scan deployment is the operate uh, in the operation focus on the construction of a true risk approach build this risk based on the critical assets and system within your organization and document then internally. True risk does have many considerations in place. Qualis QQL helps you make dashboard as needed for your organization and as a table of risk based on the criteria for each asset or group of assets. CBE priorization is not enough at the time. That's why it's helpful to see other criteria I have I indicated. And it is also helpful to know that these criteria like no explorable vulnerability are also, uh, quality also give you a dashboard, I mean, just a graph there where you can click on it and see the information uh, about vulnerabilities that have been on the wire, being exploited in the wire. It is also important to indicate that the CISA no explorer vulnerability as a factor is also mentioned there as CISA website as a very important criteria in order that take into account not just the proof of concept of vulnerability but also to take into account if it has been explored recently and quality do the best do the best a good job there showing this in the graph in terms of time. But what is also helpful is that the true risk can help, I mean, can show, show us even mathematically and, and show how we can apply the, tree, the risk in our organization. You may combine the dashboard and it's very easy to design new ones based on PCI requirements and the information you have from the systems, modules, and, and modules you have on board. On the dashboard, I recommend you to concentrate on the true risk one, where you can see the true risk score and the one uh, for inventory by software. If you combine BNDR with CSAN, you could further see the end of support and end of life of these softwares, which will reduce your exposure to vulnerabilities. The true risk has a different approach and could vary depending on the number of assets you choose. So it is important to address the risk as specifically as you can in order to accomplish your risky goals.
the new requirement, those 6.3.1, is, it is based on risk-based assessment approach for vulnerability management. So it is necessary to determine the risk ranking to be associated with vulnerability. Vulnerability could be very custom and are well covered. The new requirement 11.3.1.2 about internal vulnerability scan via authenticated scanning. So you can do this uh, after deploying your quality sensor in uh, internal on-premise if you need it. So A risk-based approach assessment from quality has many threats that are mapped to detect vulnerability and give you the context for vulnerability, which can be effectively combined with the map risk inside the organization to specific devices. So you can effectively run your hardware program based on your compliance plan. As Anvi mentioned, the network security controls are configured and maintained within the requirement 1.2. And the number two regarding hardening, the 2.2, .2 and about secure configuration for all systems. Uh, over there, you have, uh, besides PCI, you have other standards that were, where policy comply helps you a lot. So you can effectively run your hardware program within your PCI compliance module, which offer, I mean, that offers an automated scan and report of control match to your compliance policy. There are pre-built dashboard, or you can make your own using QQL or quality query language. Establish your very line, baseline and move on to the next compliance step. The cybersecurity asset management and the requirement 12.5.1 that talks about inventory of system components that are in a scope of PCI and the asset classification for external versus external. This co where it comes the CSAM modules. The CSAM modules give you a lot of capabilities like improved risk prioritization with incomplete asset context, internal task of software management. You may discover blind spot, including asset missing from your vulnerability program. You may discover the person of unknown internet facing asset and the external asset software management or external asset management are also included within the module of CSAM. So CSAM is perfect for addressing and prioritizing. You can inventory all your devices and you can also inventory your software. What I like most is that you can classify and prioritize based on your data and have the true risk score at a glance. But besides that, you have information on the software installed as I have said before, and it's a status in terms of support from the vendor, along with a timeline indicating if it's already end of life of, of end of support. This is perfect for internal planification and prioritization. Sometimes we have software there and we don't really, we are not so sure when the software gonna be end of support or end of life, but quality does do help us with this because you can pl uh, you can plan your grapes in terms of that quality is already indicating in in how long the software will be end of life on our support so because not each asset has the same level of severity in if organization that's why the CSAM model helps you a lot so you can tag you can tap your severity on each asset and then 
uh, have the map also to the equation that true risk also use that takes the into consideration the risk associated with a specific asset. So now we arrive to the fine. We have been using fine for a long time now. We have been using other vendors also. And we are uh, implementing the, the fine and, and knowing all, all its features. So as we have seen so far, the fine assets monitoring covers all user assets, even if integrity is not monitored. Automate alerts and reports for failure of fine. And it is important that there are noise cancellation with fine-tuned profiles and building thread intelligence to detect malicious or suspicious hashes. It is ready to use. They are ready. They are profiles already for PCI uh, for for zero and real time. Being capturing of who, when, what, and where details are using it. This, uh, what I like most about Finn is also that you don't need to deploy any more agent. And since it integrates also threat capabilities, it's very important just to be alert there what is necessary too. And that there are already pre built configurations that you can deploy. It is very important from in their competitors uh, to have the features already on. Then we have another module there, where is Total Cloud, where that helps you uh, continue, I mean, to inventory or your assets that are in the cloud and effectively uh, maintain and show the network control that you have in place. The Total Cloud also helps you in the remediation of vulnerability, including for all cloud components and the patches, and for those that are less critical in time frame. So based on, on, on a formal risk analysis. Now we arrive to another module that quality effectively delivered for us to be compliant with PCI uh, for zero. It is the EDR and APP module. The requirement 5.2.2 .2 is a requirement about anti malware solution that should not just detect, but remove block or contain or known type of malware. New requirement performs continued behavior analysis of system and process. The quality EDR helps you while you are doing threat hunting process. It informs you very quickly about the time frame where you can just click on the chart and go to specific event as they occur. It is also allows you to make your uh, if necessary, to make any accession there very quickly. And besides, it informs me TTPs and the status of the process where it acts in a very, very smooth way. It is very easy to deploy the EDR and you don't need to deploy anything just to have the model from Qualys. So it's you start your hunting process very quickly and you can uh, be investigating what threats are there on your devices and effectively correcting and removing root of cause. What I like also most was that it is acting and doing many things and showing you evidences of everything and it is effectively removing and effectively containing any threat that could be found there. So in terms of our recommendations about the implementation of PCI-4, we have made our, our assessment 
of uh, uh, with QSA, uh, it is very important to have your own assessment. Uh, explore solutions uh, that address compliance with minimal fatigue because there are many uh, many points that you need to cover, many requirements that you will need to be compliant with, and there are enough there are not enough time for that. Focus on compliant native integrated solution like Qualis. Expand to other solutions, integrations, and innovation to come more PCI DSS requirement. Build your own risk template and choose available resources to do so. Build your own dashboard. You can do it very easily. Monitor your compliance progress and establish one or more pass fail criteria based on true risk. As I have been said before, no, it is not just important the high and the critical vulnerability, but the others one. Continue planning and work together with teams, including GRC within your organization. Implement as many automated tools and strategy as you can for internal and external scan. So there is not enough time to lose for PCI for compliance. Every organization will only be certified to our PCI for the zero in 2024, and there are other controls that will take place in 2025. The transition period of PCI version 3.1 will be retired on March next year. Be prepared for PCI, I mean, be prepared for the year of 20 and 25 since all new requirements and control should be mandatory. Identify all of them and then work of them to see if you don't have any gaps and can comply with them on time. Focus on the solution you need to implement and begin shortly. Try to choose tools that have most of the product and requirement integrated so you can avoid as much integration as possible. You need to grow with the solution you choose, so pay attention to details in compliance solution. Qualis does offer many integrations to fully address your PCI requirements and to continue evolving with other standards you may need. So that's all I have today. If you have any questions, please let me know. Great. Well, thank you very much, Isaiah. It's very interesting stuff. I appreciate you taking the time out today to with us.